What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So this would be the spoiler free review for Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, which as I just stated is coming to us from Christopher Nolan and it is written by Nolan as well. It stars Killian Murphy in the titular role, Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh, Josh Hartnett, Jack Quaid, and several other familiar faces we all know and love. Uh, well, maybe some of us, not all of us, know and love. The film, of course, is centering on J. Robert Oppenheimer, a theoretical physicist who was pivotal in developing the first nuclear weapons as part of the Manhattan Project and thereby ushering in the atomic age. Now, Oppenheimer, I will have to say, is one of Christopher Nolan's best accomplishments. I truly would have to only knock it for being so relentless that a lot of it isn't allowing you to digest or breathe during the experience because of the choice of pacing. Well, actually, I, I also will have to knock it for not giving me the final destination for theater experience I deserve when that bomb went off. <laughs> just just kidding. <laughs> the relentless pacing is a blessing and a curse. Oppenheimer retains an intense atmosphere from start to finish, but because of this relentless nature, our characters are very underwhelming. Still, even in the midst of this relentless spectacle, each character is made to feel important to the story and its progressions. None more so, obviously, than our titular character, Robert Oppenheimer, but that's to be expected. Nolan's screenplay explores the complexity of this man in such a wonderful way, and Killian Murphy is excelling in every scene he is in. Robert is clearly smart, but he's also not loyal to his wife and has a few other flaws like any other person possesses if we are being honest with ourselves but is he loyal to his country that's for you to discover when you witness Oppenheimer in theaters there's a gradual swelling of tension constantly through this movie I, I would say mostly leading up to the explosion uh, which truly allowed me to be sucked into the three-hour experience that only certain filmmakers like Nolan himself could get me to endure Every moment leading up to the inevitable explosive test is captivating, and then the test itself is more impactful prior to the explosion than afterwards, unfortunately. The impact of it all is rather lackluster and underwhelming. I don't know what to blame what to blame it on here, but perhaps it's better, better in IMAX. The scene itself is still one of the best moments in the film, and I was on the edge of my seat in anticipation, but again, the boom was just lackluster, that's all. Uh, the dialogue in this film is, is at times a bit head scratching while most of the communication between characters are believable. A lot of it is also seemingly unnatural, but that could just be me ignoring that it's not set in 2023. Then again, Nolan's dialogue has bothered me on more than a few occasions in, in the past. Despite that, there are a couple of gripping monologues during this three hour blockbuster. So you have that to lean back on. So for every miss that I see in this movie, Nolan has another home run rating waiting to make me eat my words now the story definitely can be a bit hard to follow and at least a majority of it isn't i think this is one of nolan's constant weaknesses as a writer just in full display in oppenheimer in terms of being able to keep the narrative coherent from start to finish in terms of focusing on the character itself he does a great job there it's just when we're jumping back and forth in terms of the plot and timing to focus on other characters that are intertwined with our titular character that's like wait when is this happening but obviously i'm going to revisit this still this is possibly some of nolan's best work yet sound design wise it's out of this world but the mixing makes the dialogue hard to digest at times but again i'm still gonna have to give him his praise when it comes to the sound mixing this time around too killian murphy delivers a career defining performance as our titular character the emotional and moral dilemma that grows inside of oppenheimer is captured strongly in murphy's facial expressions Emily Blunt is underutilized, really, but don't worry, because every time she's on screen, she's shining and she's stealing the scene. And every performance, I would say, is great and a true testament to Nolan's brilliance as a director. Even Josh Hartnett impressed me. And Josh Hartnett, I know, gets a lot of flack as, as an actor. And it was nice to see him with a decent haircut for all my halloween h2o fans out there you know what i'm talking about top three performances were easily blunt murphy and robert downey who does do an amazing job i will have to say that not to get too distracted but for my horror fans again out there there's so many mini reunions whether it's the whether it be stars from the recent halloween trilogy or past halloween films a quiet place or some other project i was just geeking out a little bit over that while watching this the score is beautiful and maybe i'm not the only one who thinks this but some moments with the score seem to perfectly capture Oppenheimer's growing anxiety and frustrations which I thought was a nice touch the the themes here in this movie regarding communism I guess there's also ties to the patriarchy and being a feminist I think all of that is 
captured in a way that is handled well enough, but probably could have thrived better if the characters were more developed and not so paper thin as opposed to just our titular character in Oppenheimer himself. Granted, Emily Blunt, I would say, may become second best in terms of just because of her ties to Oppenheimer, that's his wife, but everyone else around him, there's so many different people. I don't remember a lot of their names. I'm just being honest. The, the, the cast was stacked. Everybody delivered in, in what they came to do, but I'm not going to remember any of these people really unless I rewatch this film multiple times. Much as I suspect much of the viewers who get to witness it later this weekend will feel the same way upon leaving the theater. All in all, I'm going to have to give this an 8 out of 10. It's it's amazing in terms of its craft. It is. I think the script is the biggest weakness. That's all. Everything else is firing on all cylinders. The pacing, I also will again say, is something that doesn't allow you to breathe, but the movie isn't horrendously made in any way it's a christopher nolan project after all let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews i'm going to cover in the future and yes i will have to also add this the subject matter is quite horrifying if you're considering how far we've come with these explosives and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video